I'd like to present to you the, the Verifone installation process for the M400. We'll begin with the, the device itself. We remove the back plate off of that unit. We will then see that we have a USB-C adapter in the back. Into that position is where we'll insert the data cable like so and then we'll place the access panel back on top. Now that access panel will seat just a little bit and then it will a little gentle push allow it to go in. Also included in your kit is a security screw that can get dropped into the position here and then a small Phillips screwdriver will secure that. Now the other component that may or may not be assembled when you get the unit in is the stylus and stylus holder. Now if we look at this closely there is a cable that gets seated in this slot of the device. Now there is a slight angle of that cable with the flat portion going down towards the bottom. It simply slides in like that. Now it's good to know this because you may at times we've seen where these cables have gotten damaged and need to replace the stylus. So it's quite easy to do. Um, that then will get inserted back in the side of the unit. Again, the push button right here will release that. Now with the data cable inserted, the stylus mounted, then we go on to the power and ethernet connections. As we talk about this, if this were accessed through a port as in this counter, you would bring that cable up and then insert in before completing this installation. We'll go ahead and plug into the power. We'll go ahead and insert that power and also at the same time connect our Ethernet cable, which added in this case is going to a simple switch at the back, but it would in your case go all the way back to the main switch for the installation. Power note is that this should be also on the UPS component. Uh, the battery side of your uh, UPS unit. Now the last component to be installed here is the stand. It will then have there are two ears in the back of that get that get slid into the base of the unit and then there's a security nut that gets screwed in so that unit is secure. This is normally then screwed into the tabletop with the three provided screws. And be aware that there is a limited pivoting action of this device, so make sure you get that um, base in the right position. So it may take a little bit of effort to look at that and determine the best configuration. Now this particular device has already been set up once, but it's going through a normal restart. The following video will also go over the process that there's multiple restarts upon that first configuration. We'll go through that process to explain what that looks like. So here we are with those multiple reboots we were just talking about. This is about an hour of compressed time. Expect five to six reboots before the system will come back to the welcome screen. Upon return of the welcome screen, we can continue with the configuration. Once the system is up and running and has all its updates applied, we can go into the Verifone device with pressing 1, 5, and 9 simultaneously. That will bring up the main menu of the Verifone device. If we take the, the stylus, we're going to choose control panel, then we're going to choose sys mode. Takes it a moment to proceed forward. Then we're going to choose supervisor, 
and we're going to enter in the password of 1668321 and then press the green button. From the administration screen, we'll choose date and time. Here we want to just simply confirm the date and time. If it's incorrect, for instance, the time, we can tap on that. We can set the hour, the minute, and the second, and then proceed on. If the date, month, and year were incorrect, similar processes will allow you to change that. Once we're done with this, we'll select the left top arrow. Then we'll proceed on to communications. Then we'll select Ethernet. And the top option of ETH0. This particular device has already been set to DHCP. We desire to have this set to static. So we'll select the drop down and we'll choose static. The next position speed should be set to auto and auto start should be set to on. We're going to then select the next option of IP address. Your technician will give you the appropriate values to enter in but it typically goes like this. We'll back over because the system has already picked up the initial portion of the IP address and then the technician will tell you what address number to put in. Pay particular attention to the numbers and the periods entered in during the sequence told. Select the ENTR to save the options. Next we're going to go down to the mask option and typically is entered 255.255.255.0. Selecting Enter will complete that task. Simply swiping up on this screen will move the screen up for you and then we'll enter in the gateway by tapping on the empty field. The system will typically create the appropriate entry. If it is incorrect, you can use the backspace to back over that value and then re-enter as indicated by the technician. Selecting the ENTR will complete this task. Next we'll go into DNS1. We'll tap on that value. And typically it is 8.8.8.8. .8 Select Enter. And then we'll go on to DNS2. This, in this particular case, we'd like to correct this. We would like to put in here 8.8.4.4. And we'll select Enter. So with these options entered, and then confirm, just to go back down and make sure that you have it set, selecting the top left arrow, we'll then have the system proceed just a little tap, takes a moment. Then select Save, OK. Do we need to configure another interface? No. Then we'll select again the top left arrow. Select it again. Then we're ready to select Exit. Upon selecting Exit, you'll choose Reboot. The system will then reboot. It will arrive back at the main menu in about a minute or so. The device shows the serial number on the screen. It is also available on the back of the unit. The device will go through its normal reboot process doing the Verifone Connect portion. That initial initialization is complete. There's our IP address is what we're looking for. Then the system will continue on at the normal pace from here. Now we're back up to an operating screen. 
So next we're going to set up the configuration of the Transact POS workstation. Within Transact POS, you continue on to System, Workstation, enter in your user ID and password, then select General, then choose to the right under Credit Card Reader, Verifone, and you'll select the appropriate Verifone device, in this case, the M400. Into the device address, you'll enter in that address provided to you by the technician. We're going to change this value to the configuration that we've assigned our physical device. The device port listening value is starts out at 5016. On terminal server environments, that will be a sequential number unique to each point of sale workstation. For instance, 5016 would be the first, 5017 would be the next, 5018 would be the next. The workstation IP address is that of the particular workstation itself. If this were a terminal configuration, the this workstation's IP address will be that of the server at each workstation. To the right of the IP address at the top, selecting test should correspond to an appropriate successful test to the indicated IP address. Selecting test below this one will indicate a successful test to the workstation itself. Selecting register will invoke the sequence of events that will register this device at the workstation. So we will enter in on the device the 1486 by taking the stylus and entering 1486 and then press enter. There's a pin match, then selecting OK, and it indicates that the system is appropriately working. Selecting OK here will continue back to the main screen. And then we can go into point of sale, for instance, and select ring sale, enter in a user ID, and select a, an item. And then we should see that item appear not only on the screen on the PC, but also that on the M400 device. This confirming that proper operation of the unit. Selecting cancel will then allow you to return to the main screen. Thank you.